Yeah, for me, it's like learning a language that you start off with odd words here and there, you know, you just blurt them out very badly and then you start to join them together and then you make sentences and make connections. Okay, we're recording. Yo, Dre, we're recording. This is a three-headed Hydra. I'm Josh, this is James and Salvador. And today, we'll be talking about Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Hear me now. Hear me now. Now, Jiu-Jitsu is not my sport in particular. But I'm definitely a fan. I hear a lot. It's, it's growing in popularity. I first heard of it probably through the Joe Rogan podcast. And I've got many friends who are getting into it and trying to encourage me. But amongst my hobbies, it's not something I've found time for. And it doesn't seem to me to be something that you should maybe half-heartedly go into. <laughs> Turn up now and then and just get beaten up. It's not something I fancy. I think if you're going to if you're gonna go for it, you've got to go for it ten toes. Yeah, ten um, toes. Mm. And like I say, to, to me, it seems to be a, the intellectuals seem to take this sport on. That's a lot of what people say about it. It's kind of, they say it's like a game of chess. Mind you, they say that about a lot of martial arts. But this mm. jiu-jitsu in particular seems to be popular among the intellectuals. Mm. And that's all I know about it so far. I'm hoping to learn something during this 20 minutes. Oh, we'll try our best. Senor Edgerton, do you have one minute on jiu-jitsu? I've got one minute from now. So I'd like to pick up on that point. The um, educational cognitive side of jiu-jitsu because I was listening to the great philosophy professor and jiu-jitsu this week and he was saying jiu-jitsu is a very fascinating thing because it's problem solving and humans love to solve problems right it's in our genetics in our evolution to solve problems but what jiu-jitsu is is a problem which continually changes and it's a problem that knows that you're trying to solve it and then will adapt to make a new problem continually. And so it's a problem which keeps adapting to, to you. And the more that you practice, the more problems you recognize that other people are trying to put you into and you have to adapt while causing other people problems, you know, uh, to nullify their problem. I'm running out of time already. I could talk about this already. But yeah, it's, it's, it's great physically, but also mentally, emotionally and philosophically a fantastic activity. Mm. Beautiful. Salvatore. Boom. Uh, well, like uh, Joshua, I heard about Brazilian Jiu Jitsu by uh, Joe Rogan, I believe, the Joe Rogan podcast. And I wonder actually how many people started Brazilian Jiu Jitsu because of Joe Rogan. <laughs> Probably a whole bunch. And uh, it's strange because I tried several martial arts while I was living in Germany, um, like karate, Wing Chun. Winsung, Winsung, how do you pronounce it? I have no idea. But I never really had an ambition to do martial arts at the time um, because I was, you know, distracted with other stuff in life as well. So I, and I was never really, into, really into martial arts and all the karate movies, the Bruce Lee hype and all the stuff. I kind of skipped that. But in the end, what really made me start with Brazilian Jiu Jitsu was a few things. First, um, as I was trying to improve my health, both present and for the future, I quit smoking, started fasting, also thanks to Joe Rogan, drinking less, or in this case, I haven't touched even alcohol in a year. Uh, and Jiu Jitsu provided an additional layer of fitness uh, to me. Second, I want to find a way to be able to protect myself and my partner, should it ever be necessary, just to get out of the situation um, without having to throw punches and kicks and getting hurt. You can use arm bars, chokes. It's beautiful with, with jiu-jitsu. You can control somebody without creating too much collateral damage. And third, mm -hmm. I was looking for a new challenge. Um, I like challenges, setting goals, and then trying to reach them. So I think my minute is over now as well, but that's kind of how I got into jiu-jitsu awesome. in a nutshell. So just, if nobody's ever heard of jiu-jitsu, how would you describe it, Sal, in a simple sentence? Somebody said, I don't know if jiu-jitsu is a Japanese sushi or your next door neighbor. What is jujitsu? I don't know if uh, anybody has a next door neighbor whose name is jujitsu. I hope so. It's basically it's not, a martial... this is not an, that, that was not an anti-Semitic joke, by the way. Yeah, because um, I I would say it's just a martial art, a grab based on grappling, similar to wrestling, but with, without all the show elements. Yeah. In the sense that it's highly efficient. I'm not sure it's, that this is a very good definition, but it's how I would explain oh, it it's, to it's, somebody yes, who never did wrestling it. related closely to judo, but it's mostly happening on the ground. Um, but, but your objective right. in jiu-jitsu is to submit the other person, so to either choke them or do something with one of their um, joints, which makes them tap. As soon as you tap, it's over. 
And I think that's a really important element of jujitsu because there's a lot of trust involved because you know, so that if somebody holds onto your arm and pulls it for another five seconds, that thing's going to break. Right. Now we're talking there's about a the sports situation. So if you tap during training or sport, sure. the sport situation, then it's over. If you're in sure. a street fight, then... You're talking about personal personal defense because there's sort of a sport element, like you say, and then a personal, right. personal defense. Mm-hmm. Um, element um, but like you say like you said before I think in your minute so if, if you get into an altercation on the street there's nothing better than jujitsu because you're gonna get away from the situation as soon as you can you're taught you're told regularly not to follow the confrontation to deal with the confrontation and get out of there it's not about right. um, you know it's not about beating anyone down it's about avoiding the conflict and just using the minimal necessary force if you have to the worst thing you'll do is to choke somebody out and then shake their legs for two seconds and they'll wake up and then you walk off pretend pretend that nothing's happened but it's not to hurt anybody it's actually um (laughs) the objective of jiu-jitsu is for peace not for war right and i like the kind of this very technical aspect of it because it um it prevents it from being filled with a lot of testosterone-filled idiots who just mm. want to show off and mm. punch and, you know, be cool. Rather, if you want to get good at it and you want to keep up with jiu-jitsu, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, you really have to become technical and you really have to have a lot of discipline. And so I like the, um, mm. that kind of immediately it's, it weeds out all the, uh, you know, wannabe martial artists from those that really return and yeah. continue and you get a very uh, quality group of people and yeah. community that you are part of so i don't think you can you can separate the physical from the core aspects because there's so many metaphors in jiu jitsu if you don't go in humble you will be humbled immediately right because the group will take it upon themselves to choose one person to fight you and they will humble you and right. and and that that can be a beautiful thing if you choose to come back and learn from that uh, because you're not the big guy I am. And if you ever think you are, then you should go and train jiu-jitsu and you realize that there are many, many, many other things that you need to learn. Right. And then there's other, other metaphors that I love with jiu-jitsu, like the fact that it's like a conversation, right? Okay, mm-hmm. with sweaty bodies, but it's a conversation. That mm-hmm. I, I am listening to what you want, and you're listening to what I want. And in order to win, in order to, to, to get the upper hand or to get what I, what I need, I need to adapt my actions to what you're trying to do as well. I can't just go in there like a, like a tractor. Burr, burr, burr. I'm going to get the armbar. I'm going to get the armbar. Because your movement will give me certain things that I can have. And um, I will, like I said in my minute, the problem continually changes. And so it's about mental quickness and also being patient, that's another thing I've learned with Jiu-Jitsu, man, you think you're in a good position and you start grabbing. In um, in, in Buddhism, in the Alan Watt book, Alan Watt's book, he calls it uh, Trishna, no? grabbing, grabbing, mm. grabbing. You get too anxious, you think, oh, I'm nearly there, I'm nearly there. And of course, that's the moment that you lose everything. So it teaches you a lot of pa- patience, um, being able to think under extreme pressure, and I'm talking physical pressure and mental right. pressure. Um, and there's a lot of things that you can transfer from the mat to your everyday life. Mm-hmm. A lot of so, values. So Joshua, did you ever um, try to do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? I didn't, no. Uh, but a lot of what you're saying resonates with, with what I felt in the Muay Thai gym. That's the, that's mm. the martial art that I spent most time practicing. I, mm. probably, I haven't done a lot. I, I remember I went to Thailand and I had a fight, which I talked about on your uh, podcast. But that was about... Three weeks, three weeks of twice a day, mm-hmm. and I did 20 hours of, of private lessons after that, and that's all the Muay Thai I did. But I've got, I, I don't want to put down Jiu-Jitsu during the Jiu-Jitsu podcast. It's not putting it down anyway. What I was going to say was a lot of what you're saying, I did find that I got from the, um, from, from the little bit of Muay Thai that I practiced. A lot of the, mm. of you and, and I read a thing on Facebook the other day. I think it was one of these MMA pages when all the kind of um, carnage was going on with, uh, you know, politically. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. with the Black Lives mm-hmm. Matter. And it said something about the gym is the place where you will see middle class, upper class, 
black, white, any mm-hmm. everyone mingling, and 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 you really, I, I mean, my description isn't going to do it justice, but there is a there is a real sense that everyone's on an equal level there, and it's probably mm-hmm. because, like you say, they've been humble, big, small. If you're not technically good, but maybe with jiu-jitsu, you. you Maybe with the with, with the Muay Thai, you can get away with being a big guy versus a little mm. guy. You have more advantage than you would. But whereas Jiu Jitsu, if you if you are technically flawed, you you know size doesn't really matter. Mm. There are ways a little guy can put a big guy down. That's one of the great things about Jiu Jitsu. I think that, that it's always been um, touted as the little guy sport. You know, because it got it it's 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 been going for decades from the the Gracie family in um, in Brazil. You know, for for over half a century. Uh, but it only really became famous in about 1991, 92, when it was UFC one, right? The first ever mixed martial arts event. And it was so primitive. It was unbelievable. So you had sort of representatives from each martial art and they'd just fight each other, but they'd use their own techniques. It wasn't mixed at that point in the, in the sense that one person had a series of skills. Each person had a very specific skill set. And the jujitsu guy it was Gracie. It was a Gracie. Um, I think it was Voice. He he won the whole tournament uh, because these massive boxers and wrestlers and everything would come at him and he'd boom, he'd use their energy against them. He'd use their movement against them, and he was the smallest guy, but but he he beat everybody with with his uh, with his slickness. Mm-hmm. Um, but like you said, then I think everybody's equal in the sense that. There is a hierarchy there and there's a hierarchy of competence and it doesn't matter if you're uh, a doctor or a lawyer, it doesn't matter if you are a student, it doesn't matter what you do in life, it doesn't matter where you've been, it doesn't matter where you're from, as soon as you're on the map you don't see anything because everybody wears the same uniform and it's just based on your competence and, and everything starts from respect, you know, you do, the, you do the symbol to start any fight, you do the symbol to end any fight. What happens in the middle you know people get aggressive people you know try their best to strangle the hell out of you and, all, and then as soon as it finishes your best friends again and you often find the hardest fights that you have are the people that you you respect and earn most respect f- from um in the end uh, so it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing actually mm-hmm. don't care who you are where, <laughs> where you're from well, I think it's also an element that um, you strangle almost me. like a spiritual experience, like much like it was for me when I did the Camino de Santiago, like spiritual, not in a literal sense, but mm-hmm. there's like this element of repetitive mantra. BJJ is quicker, like there's a lot of rhythm, repetitions, mm-hmm. like when you do the drills, you know, it's very snappy, you repeat the same basics over and over again, but yeah. it's the same thing really. It's like a mantra mm-hmm. that you repeat over and over again and eventually you get better. Yeah. Uh, by the way, it's not to be to um, just one thing that we forgot maybe to mention in the introduction is it has not really anything to do or it's not the same thing as Japanese or traditional jiu-jitsu because it has yes. the same name, but it's really two different things. One is really a grappling art form and the traditional jiu-jitsu, as I understand, is still a lot similar to karate or, you know, it has the punches, it has the the kicks, so it's a whole different kind of a uh, thing. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. You're educating me, so I didn't know that. Mm. And did you know also, if we're talking about facts, do you know what the Jew in Jiu Jitsu means? Because it's J I U. It's no. Japanese. What does it mean? Then I'll tell you. It means gentle. So Jitsu means gentle. art. So Jiu Jitsu is gentle art. And I think, well, we notice that, Sal, when we thrash around like, like fish in a barrel <laughs> with, our, with our white belts. That Most the, of the time, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the better jiu-jitsu players actually are the best ones at preserving their energy and being more efficient with their movements. Uh, yeah. and, that, and when you watch people like that, it really does become a gentle art. Because you don't need to put a lot of force into applying pressure. You just need to know the right point. Right. Um, And then you need to be patient and wait for the other person to move so you can use their movement to to get the upper hand. It's it's a lot of strategy. That's my strategy these days. Like I'm trying to actually not use any force at all. Mm. And 
I mean, I still constantly find myself in arm locks or triangles yeah. or whatever. So, you know, but at least I'm not using force. So hopefully I will actually learn the techniques while trying different things. And, you know, yeah. maybe that's, yeah, that's, a, maybe that's, that's a good strategy. Maybe not. We'll see. Yeah. Time will and also, Sal, I sent you the thing the other day that um, this, this guy that I mentioned earlier, John Danaher, the, the, right, yeah. the great coach, he said, your your fighting style will depend on your body type and your personality. And we talked about personality in a previous podcast. We had the personality tests. Do you think your fighting style reflects your reflects aspects of your personality? Not at all. <laughs> okay. No. Why? Um, because if it would map my personality, I would probably probably study a lot every day, but not at the moment. So I I wouldn't say at the moment it reflects my my um, results from the from the big five test. Yeah. Yeah. Yourself, what about yourself? Uh, no, thank God, because the 86th percentile volatility would get me absolutely nowhere <laughs> in jiu-jitsu. It would be completely counterproductive. So no, actually, it calms me down a lot and, and makes me realize that, A, you can't react to anything because you will, you will be punished. Um, and then secondly, um, Patience. I'm, I'm not a patient person. It's something that I'm working on and um, you need to be patient because I get into good positions more often than I finish the, mm. the fights. So, you know, it's a step to take. But um, it, it's also helped me. I know that we are orderliness, but it's also helped me to become a lot better at that aspect. I got removed from the mat one day because my kimono was smelly. Was really? a little bit smelly. Yeah, it was really <laughs> embarrassing, man. But, you know, I have I had no excuses. There are rules, right? There are very, very specific sets of rules. And the rules say you come with a clean kimono. It wasn't absolutely disgusting, but um, you? the teacher has a very good... <laughs> well, you? exactly. Maybe it's like smelling your own farts, you know? You don't really realize. But, um, but yeah, they made me change the kimono. They lent me a new one. Um, uh, I've never done it again. I've, I put it straight in the washing machine now. But it's it's this kind of lesson that you that you remember because there are very very specific rules. When you change, when you move your, uh, when you how do you say systematic, when you you fix your your suit together, right? You should do it away from the from the from the picture, away from the. It's, it, there is a sort of cult like element to it because it's a picture of Carlos Gracie who was the the first. Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner. There's a photo on the wall at the front. But anyway, there are, the, the point I'm making is that there are, there are very specific rules. And so doing jiu-jitsu is a, it's a quasi-religious practice because it does have standards and it does enforce discipline, but discipline of the best kind, uh, in my opinion. Yeah, and there's no brainwashing going on, I, I suppose. I mean, <laughs> maybe I've been brainwashed and I didn't realize, but it seems to me to be not no. that. that it seems to be to be totally not that kind of a gig. Um, <clears throat> no, maybe talking about orderliness, maybe there are some elements that may may apply to the big five um, tests you re refer to. But then again, it could be like a horoscope where you see certain traits <laughs> that fit and you're like, hey, I am exactly that. But so would you be interested in, in competing? Because we, we just train, you and I, at the, at the Gracie Baja Termini. Um, but of course, every now and then, not this year, obviously, but every now and then there are competitions where you can actually compete against um, against guys from other schools. Right. Are you interested in that? Generally, yes, uh, but um, I would have to see how how much better I get and how much time actually I, I will uh, put into that because I will not get better just by wishing I will get better. I will have to get better by putting in the work and that's um, not a priority I have right now. Um, yeah, yeah. To do comp to compete, you know, I have other projects that are more important. But maybe next year, yeah, could be that. I mean, generally, but you know I'm that if, if sorry, man, if next year we get our blue belt, we'll be competing against blue belts. I know. I mean, there's never a good squashed like flies. There's never a good moment to start, though. <laughs> just gotta start. Just gotta yeah. jump right into it, and that's but, it. Um, man, I love the the multicultural element to it as well. Like I was uh, rolling with this uh, Brazilian guy today who had lived in Russia. So he was telling me about his experience doing samba in St. Petersburg. Said it was Is brutal. it that super hyperactive guy? He's very upbeat all the time. He just moved here recently, right? Yeah, yeah, he's really cool. Man. He's him, just energy. It's just a ball of energy. Yeah, oh, I'm super excited. Oh. And then I, yeah, yeah. Oh, we shouldn't talk about, actually, we shouldn't talk about, that's one of the rules. What happens on, in Fight Club stays in Fight Club. 
you don't talk about what it's individual rolling, so I can't go any further. But let's just say he's a very, very high level, highly skilled um, jiu jitsu player. Um, and he, well, I won't go into any more detail. Let's just say he crushed me like a fly many times in five minutes. And then he was the nicest guy before and after. So it was, it was a great balance. Well, and I think we hit our 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Cool. Gents. Right. Any, any closing words? Yeah, for me, it's like learning a language. Mm. That you start off with odd words here and there. You know, you just blurt them out very badly. And then you start to join them together. And then you make sentences and make connections. Somebody else has described it to me like walking through a city. And you get to know this city really well. And slowly but surely, you get to know different routes to different parts of the city. That's when you join the moves together. And you become fluent in a language. You become fluent. And you, you link all of your words and ideas together. That's the dream, but you know, we've got a lot of work to do. Yeah, love it. Beautiful. Perfect. All right. Boss. It's a wrap. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching or listening to this episode of the Three Headed Hydra podcast today with James, Joshua, and I himself. Follow us on Apple Podcasts or YouTube. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, leave a comment. And see you soon. Bye-bye. Mm. Oh, Why are we making these podcasts? Because three heads are better than one. We'll combine our experiences and research on engaging topics to learn a bit more each time. Enjoy the chat and improve our own communication skills in the process. Innovation comes from the ability to correlate information between different realms of knowledge. And we all have very different realms of knowledge between the three of us. Why the Hydra, you ask? In archetypal mythology, dragons guard piles of gold. Overcoming fears can bring great rewards. What you most need is often where you least want to look. And we won't shy away from the fire to challenge each other and reach that goal. What's in it for you, listener? Learn, laugh and love. Get involved and join us on this adventure.